Hello, everyone, and, and welcome to this, this special webinar put on by the Fuss Foundation. I'm Mike Canny, the Scientific Director of Carthera, and today I'm going to be talking about the SonoCloud system, uh, which is an implantable ultrasound-based uh, device that we've been developing for the past 10 years at Carthera to do temporary disruption of the blood-brain barrier. So just a, a short overview of Carthera. Uh, the company was founded in 2010 by the neurosurgeon Alexander Carpentier. Uh, we have a pipeline of clinical stage programs and different CNS indications, including glioblastoma, brain mets, and Alzheimer's disease. And uh, we published some of the first clinical results using our SonoCloud device in recurrent GBM patients in 2016, and subsequently a follow-up paper in 2019 on that first trial. Okay, so shown on this slide are, are, are the two different versions of the SonoCloud device that we've developed so far. Uh, the SonoCloud 1 device is shown on the left and is a small ultrasound implant that's designed to, to fit in a burr hole in the skull. Uh, we use this device in our first pilot trials in, in glioblastoma patients, and we're also using it in trials in Alzheimer's disease and brain mets. Uh, the device that I'm mainly gonna focus on today is the SonoCloud 9, and that's shown on the right. And the SonoCloud 9 is a larger device that's really designed to sonicate a much larger volume of tissue here. Uh, there's nine different ultrasound emitters that are spaced over a grid that's six by six centimeters. And this is, a, this is the device that we're currently using in three different trials in, in glioblastoma. So just a little more info on the device. The SonoCloud 9, like I said, is this grid of nine ultrasound emitters. Each of the emitters operates at one megahertz. And when it's activated, they're sequentially activated uh, for a duration of four minutes to do the, the blood-brain barrier disruption. Uh, the device is passive and MR compatible. Uh, it's placed during a resection surgery. So when the surgeon goes in and resects uh, the tumor, they've just replaced the bone flap with this device, and then the skin covers over the top of the, of the device. At each activation, uh, you plug in the transdermal needle into the port shown on the left. So the needle passes through the skin, connects into the port, and then provides the, the power to drive the device using the external generator system that's shown on the right. And that external generator has a touch screen that guides the uh, user through the treatments when they inject the microbubbles and activate the device. So here's a short overview of the workflow of how the SonoCloud device is used typically. Uh, like I said, when the surgeon goes in and does a resection surgery, uh, the SonoCloud 9 is placed at the end of that, that resection procedure. Uh, and then the device is activated to do blood-brain barrier disruption at each administration of drugs. So if you're giving, for example, a monthly uh, chemotherapy like we did for our carboplatin studies, uh, you'd activate the device uh, for a period of four minutes. Uh, you'd give the drug and then you just repeat that until you, you know, saw evidence of progression or, or had, had to switch uh, drug therapies. Uh, the time for doing the sonication procedure has been very short. We've seen across trials, uh, it's typically about five minutes to do the connection of the needle with the device, and then we activate the device for a period of four and a half minutes while the microbubbles are being injected to disrupt the blood-brain barrier. Uh, these are some simulations showing the, the region that we're sonicating with the SonoCloud 9. So these nine emitters, like I said, are, are placed on a six by six uh, centimeter grid. Each of the emitters is one centimeter in diameter. And it's really designed to try to target not only you know, the tumor, any residual tumor that's left, but also the surrounding infiltrative region where we know that recurrence is most common in these GBM patients. We really wanna to try to get an increase in, in drug and chemo uh, in those regions. So we currently have three different clinical programs ongoing in GBM. Like I said, our first trial that was done with the SonoCloud 1 device isn't shown here. That trial's finished and, and the results were published in 2019 in clinical cancer research. But we've been continuing this program of using carboplatin in combination with the SonoCloud device and recurrent GBM patients in an ongoing trial right now with the SonoCloud 9. And that's ongoing in the United States and France, and we plan to recruit 33 patients in a phase 1-2 trial. In addition, we've been exploring uh, using this technique with other drug therapies. We've initiated a trial uh, in collaboration with Northwestern uh, Memorial Hospital in Chicago. And they've been very interested in using a form of albumin-bound uh, paclitaxel called a Braxane. 
in combination with the Sona Cloud 9 and recurrent GVM patients. And I think you'll hear more about that uh, during this webinar from, from Dr. Sonovan and Dr. Stute. But that, that trial plans to recruit 34 patients in a phase one, two trial. In addition, we're, we're now starting a trial in, in newly diagnosed GVM patients. Uh, and these patients will really have the Sona Cloud 9 as an add-on to their standard of care using temozolomide. And that trial is, is currently starting now, and that, that will be a trial in Europe at multiple sites um, that's soon going to start. So in conclusion, uh, SonaCloud treatments have really have been well tolerated across patients. I think we'll hear more about it within this webinar. Um, and we've also published a lot of our first clinical results in 21 patients. Uh, but now we've treated more than 50 patients, including in the elderly population. Uh, the advantage of our implantable approach is that the SonaCloud, the sonication procedure is really easy to perform. Uh, the needle is just connected to the device, microbubbles are injected, the device is activated for four and a half minutes. There's no need for any MR guidance during the procedure, or any imaging guidance. The whole sonication procedure to disrupt the blood brain barrier can be performed in the chemotherapy infusion suite at the same time by, for example, a skilled nurse or doctor. Uh, that does that procedure. And we've had patients that have really well tolerated this, this, this procedure and received up to 12 different sonications to temporarily disrupt the blood brain barrier uh, with the Solona Cloud system. And I think the last point is just that we know we can use it with a wide range of different drug therapies. We're using it now with three different drug therapies in GBM. Like I said, carboplatin, abraxane, and temozolomide. And I'm sure within this webinar, we'll hear about the potential to use it with a lot of other uh, combination therapies. So for additional information, please uh, refer to some of our recent publications that I've highlighted here. The two first two are the, the clinical results of the SonaCloud 1 that I mentioned. Uh, the second two are some preclinical work that we've done in Paris and in Chicago, uh, exploring these drug therapies. And I'm um, happy to answer any additional questions during this workshop, or please send me an email for additional info. Thank you very much.